Hey everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the weekend. We are talking Jersey Concepts today. I try and post these every single Friday. It's been a little bit inconsistent in the last couple of months because of the playoffs and drafts and all kinds of stuff going on and me switching jobs and yada yada. So uh, we're kind of back into the summer. We're kind of back into the groove and I am going to try and commit that every single Friday we will do a Jersey Concept video just like this and then I'm going to sprinkle in others as well throughout the rest of the week or you know maybe on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or something. So I've got a lot to produce and I appreciate you guys sending these in. I've got 25 or so NHL sets and then maybe 10 of other leagues. There's a Finnish one, there's a NWHL one or I don't even know. Like there's so many. I don't even know what I just said. That's how many there are. But uh, today we're looking at a previous designer that we've looked at in the past, Point Ears, aka Pointy Ears. He has come up with 32 jersey concepts. I've got them right in my screen here. I, they're just file names. I haven't seen these before, so we're going to react to these together. And uh, if you're new, would love it if you could hit the subscribe button down below. And if you're interested in coming up with these concepts yourself, maybe you're looking for a template, check out sportstemplates.net. You can use code post to post That's going to save you 10% on whatever template you want. It doesn't even have to be the jersey template, although it's the most popular on the site probably as far as my channel goes. There are other templates on the site as well from different sports, but the jersey template itself is, is incredible. It is the most realistic template out there. You can play around with the lighting. There's different layers for different sections of the jersey. It's all about showing off your creativity, your ideas in a realistic format. So that's one of the reasons why I do these videos and show off all these designs because they're very close to being true or real. And sometimes some designers get real close to a jersey that ends up actually coming out in the future. It's happened a couple of times, specifically with the reverse retros. So yeah, these are concepts, but they're very plausible, a lot of these. So let's look at them. Pointy Ears has come up with 32, which means there's a Seattle Kraken one in here. Now these were created obviously prior to the actual Seattle Kraken jerseys being released. So I'm curious to see it. But like I said, haven't seen any of these. We will react in alphabetical order as far as abbreviation. And first is Anaheim. Let's go. Okay. So we're starting off pretty decent actually. So the general striping on the arms reminds me a lot of what they use now. If uh, not identical, I don't think, but very similar. I think this thing that stands out most for me is the shoulder patches. They feel a little bit big. They're going almost edge to edge. And then the logo itself. Um, I There's no orange and I, I feel like I kind of missed the orange. So I'm wondering if the top of the logo or the top of that foot, the top of the D in the middle, if that could be orange maybe instead of that eggplant purple, uh, it might just help the logo pop a little bit. It almost The purple is almost too dark to be the primary color on that green. Um, with the rest of the jersey. So pretty good start, but still not uh, not perfect. Okay, let's move on to Arizona. Wow, this is actually this is actually pretty good. This would make, I think, a pretty good alternate. Uh, this is a really good mix between the Kachina and the home jersey. So if they hypothetically, if they do switch to the Kachina jersey full time at home and then come up with an away one, they're gonna need an alternate and the alternate can't be a Kachina jersey because, you know, that's their primaries now. So what else would they use as an alternate that maybe pays a little bit of respect to their recent history, which is the jerseys they've basically currently been using? And it's kind of this one. That is that is actually kind of similar to the one they're using now. Uh, the shoulders are colored in and the current one they're not. Um, so, and obviously a different logo, but still uh, a very interesting uh, jersey here. Now, the, the numbers on the shoulders, I do like that. But the thing on the arm where the numbers would normally be on a jersey, would that be a patch or a screen printed item onto the jersey? Because if that's a patch, that is a huge patch. It's almost the same size as a logo. So uh, if that is a patch, hypothetically, uh, I think it's I think it's too big. I think that's not, I, think, I don't think that's realistic. I think that would have to be screen printed. Okay, moving on to Boston. Okay, the, I don't know how I feel about the gray. The gray is a little, a little deceiving for me. I think it was the Reebok years that where they did this like black ice thing where they came up with a bunch of black ice jerseys that all, they all kind of look the same, kind of, uh, you know, dark, deep gray, uh, black colors or shades. Uh, so I don't know about the gray here, but I really like the font going down the arms. It reminds me of the old Atlanta Thrasher jer Thrasher's jerseys. So I'm on board for that. And I like the numbers on the shoulders. I'm wondering like if you made that gray a yellow or the gold and then change the color of the font i don't think that would look great so maybe he did make the right decision here going with the gray just i'm not used to seeing kind of like la colors or style with boston bruins it's it's, an, it's a weird 
uh, combination for me, but it's, it's got, definitely got potential. Uh, Buffalo was next. Ooh, I love those shoulders. I love the goat head in the middle, obviously, but those slashes, that's the first thing I noticed was those slashes at the bottom, and I think that's going to be a, a definite miss for me. I don't mind them so much on the arms, but in the middle, just having the cross, it almost looks like a two belts or something kind of in there, and it really splits out to, splits up the middle of the jersey. It's almost more prominent than the logo itself in the middle, so I would probably nix that and remove that and then go from there, but uh, decent. Islander, or not Islanders, Carolina Hurricanes. Ooh, so this is obviously very close to the Hartford Whalers uh, alternate jersey that came out, but mixed in here with uh, Carolina logo. I personally probably don't like this because we've already seen that alternate. It's come and gone. They're not going to make it anymore. And Carolina is probably looking to kind of get their brand back and, and work on their identity instead of the Hartford Whalers. It was a really cool thing what they did with their first retro and the alternate. I'm so happy they did it. I wish more teams would have the balls to do stuff like that. But uh, I think that time is over, and now we're getting back into the Carolina brand. So I don't think they would do something like this again in the future. Um, but it's not a bad jersey, but I think I've just maybe seen a little bit too much of it. The numbers are cool. Uh, I, although unrealistic, they are cool. Uh, that makes, you know, gives you the impression of wind ripping through, like a big hurricane winds kind of tearing away the numbers. So it's a really cool effect, although I think it's uh, not really plausible for an actual number on a jersey. Next is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Look at this. Usually when I see Columbus Blue Jackets concept, uh, concepts, they, the pinstriping is gone, and I feel myself missing it. But my first impressions for this, that, yeah, the, the pinstriping is gone, but I don't I don't miss it. I think this looks really good. This is definitely one of the best Columbus Blue Jackets concepts that I've seen. I don't think the striping is too big on, on the middle of the jersey down below or the arms. It is a bit conf conflicting with the primary logo, but it's pretty decent. I, I, I like this one a lot, pointy years. Good job. Okay, next is the Calgary, oof, the Calgary Flames. Uh, yeah, I don't like this one. <laughs> so I just complimented you on that Columbus jersey point yours, and I'm going to do the opposite here. I really don't like this one at all. Uh, the gradient, obviously, it makes sense because of fire and flames and stuff, and it's nice to see that replicated a little bit in the numbers and the, the font in the front. But this looks like a, a practice jersey or a, a warm-up jersey, something that would be... Just, just something that would be worn, worn at a practice facility and not an actual NHL game. So I'm I'm probably going to give this one definitely, a, you know, like a 2 out of 10. A thumbs down for sure. Apologies. My opinions are bold. Okay, next is the Chicago Blackhawks. And wow, we've got a combination of a lot of things. I see reverse retro logo in here. I see shoulders that kind of resemble some previous jerseys. And that shoulder patch is huge. But then the off-white color in the middle, which kind of goes way back in their history. And then on the bottom, you get the, the city flag being represented. So this is really a, a mix of a lot of different things. Um, I Individual elements I really like, but I don't think they work all together. I think, if you're, I think the city stuff at the bottom needs to be removed. It doesn't really match the brand that's at the top of the jersey. And uh, I'm not sure about those black shoulders and the red collar. I almost feel like the shoulders need to be that cream color, the off-white, and then the collar, the neck needs to be black. Uh, but not bad, not bad. I do like the off-white. That's definitely my favorite part of it. And then it looks good with that logo in the middle, that classic style logo. Next is the Colorado Avalanche. That is a bold design. I I don't know how I feel about this. That looks like a wrestling kind of style belt kind of coming down. I think the font on the front, although it does make sense with movement, it feels a little bit tacky and unfinished. I don't think it. I don't think that's realistic. So, and there's there's also awkward uh, spaces like the A and the V are close, and there's a big space between the V and the A, and the A and the L are really close, and then a big space between the L and the A, and then the C H and E are really close. But like so, it it doesn't really. There's no consistency really, other than like two, 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 and then three. So like I don't know. I that feels that feels unfinished to me. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that wave in the background too. Obviously it does make sense with an avalanche, but I think this one's gonna be a miss for me. And I usually love avalanche jerseys. So this is uh, definitely a rare occurrence on the channel. Next is the Dallas Stars. I kind of like that logo in yellow. That might be the first time I've seen a concept using that logo in yellow. I actually really like that. Now I will say that the logo itself looks to be off to the left a little bit too far. It looks doesn't look like it's centered and it's way too close to the actual star design that's made up at the bottom of the jersey and it's so far away on the other side. 
And obviously that's, that's exaggerated because one is longer than the other, but that definitely needs to shift to the right a little bit. So there's no yellow in the bottom of the jersey other than the striping, the little pinstriping that follows the shape of this bottom of the star, and no yellow in the top in the shoulder area. I think you'd have to add yellow in the top. You see that little gray stripe at the very top of the collar here? I think if that was yellow, it would help balance it a little bit. Right now, it feels a bit disconjointed from uh, top to bottom of the jersey, but really interesting design. And specifically, I like the colorization of that logo in gold. That's, that's a nice uh, change. Detroit. Ooh, it almost, it's not like a poncho, but it's, it's almost like the person is wearing a gray jersey and then this like covering is, has been put on it that just falls down the arms and falls down the front, almost like a, you know, kind of like a poncho style. I don't, uh, I don't necessarily hate it, but I don't love it. I think it is, uh, I think it's kind of just like an average jersey. Again, I always say this in my videos. I'd love to hear from Detroit Red Wings fans and to see how you feel about this one. Okay, uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Those are big shoulder patches on on the shoulders there. That I think that's too big. That almost spans from right where that you know the material change happens at the bottom of the shoulder and then right at the top of the collar. I think that is a bit unrealistic. It's almost as big as the primary logo in the middle. So I would make those smaller. Maybe even make the logo in the middle a little bit bigger. Uh, but I, th I think overall this jersey is probably just average for me. Uh, Florida Panthers. Ooh, look at those numbers, and look at the slash in behind. Wow, what the heck? That, okay, let me think about this. If you got the jersey and it wasn't stitched, those slashes would be there, so they would have to be screen printed. There's no way there could be patches, so the slashes are screen printed, and the numbers are obviously stitched on, but they have that continuation flow between the numbers, so whoever was stitching on the numbers technically would be able to align them perfectly using the scratches in the background. That's quite interesting. But if you screwed up, you'd really notice it. So would it have the same appeal if it was not stitched with numbers and it was just the slashes on the arms? I might feel a little bit awkward. Overall, I think it's an okay jersey. Like I'm talking about the numbers a lot and stuff, but uh, overall I do kind of like the jersey. Shoulders, yeah, I think they're okay being colorized like that. Overall, uh, a decent jersey. Next is the LA Kings. I like the purple, I like the yellow. That is. That is really great. Having the little crown colorized in the in the primary logo at the bottom uh, to match the striping is a really nice addition. I like that, but not mimicking that same colorization at the top on the shoulders. It's the same logo, just colorized differently and obviously a different size. So I don't necessarily like that. I think there's maybe some consistency issues there, but I do kind of like the rest of the jersey. This would be a, a really nice alternate, I think. I would say, see how the color comes down uh, underneath kind of in the armpit and down in the middle. I would probably remove that. That feels unnecessary. Uh, next is the Minnesota Wild. Holy colors. Okay, off-white, red, yellow, blue, and green. So there's five colors. Oh, and there's there's a gray down below as well, uh, providing a secondary silhouette in, in behind. So there's six colors on here. Wow, that's a lot of colors. I love the numbers on the shoulders on that off-white with that specific font. I think that was a really good decision. Having the alternate logo or a variation of the alternate logo that they've used in the past in the middle, but then having their actual logo on the arms, I think there's so much going on. Numbers on the shoulders, uh, current logo smaller on where the numbers used to go or should go, regular logo in the middle, six different colors, silhouetted like seen at the bottom. This is a really, really busy jersey. I think if you cleaned it up a little bit, I would remove the logo both off the arms, keep the primary logo. I think that looks really good. I get, I like the blue numbers on the shoulders. I might almost even change the neck color to be that blue. And then I don't know, I'd have to play around with this one. There's lots of potential here, but as it is right now, I think it is way too busy. Okay, next, the Montreal Canadiens. Heck yeah, this is an interesting design. Everything's kind of mirrored, arm mirrors over into the middle, so what, what is blue on the arm is red in the middle, and what is red in the arm is blue in the middle, so it kind of uh, mirrors there. So that is that is actually a really interesting design, the fleur de lis on the shoulder. Overall, I think this was a, a pretty good attempt, definitely not the worst Montreal Canadiens concept that I've seen. Uh, not the best, but I I would say that I definitely like it. It is, it is busy, but I think it probably would plausibly work as an alternate in the future. New Jersey Devils are next. Whoa, holy. 
this is awesome. The way that he has the staged gradient on the arms, it almost makes it look like the red, like there's layers that are that's popping off of the jersey. There's actual visual dimension to this jersey on the arms. That is really cool. I like that a lot. This is an extremely modern design, almost almost something that the brand needs, an alternate jersey that is has more black and is more modern. And stage grading at the bottom of the jersey as well. And in the neck, this is a fantastic jersey. This is probably one of the best New Jersey Devils concepts that I've ever seen. I will say that, remember how I mentioned earlier the color coming down into the armpit along the bottom? I would remove that. I'd like to see just that black at the top of the shoulders and have that being red in the middle. This is good. This is this is really good. This is definitely my favorite so far. Well done, Pony Ears. Next is Buffalo, or sorry, Nashville. <laughs> uh, okay, lots going on here. Again, numbers on the shoulders, uh, not too bad. I like the primary logo being used. I really like the guitar string striping along the bottom. That secondary kind of, ooh, actually, have I seen that before? That must be custom. I like that alternate logo on the arms there. That is a that is a really nice, has a really nice logo on there. I like that a lot. Uh, the neck, I'm not a fan of the neck though. I don't, I don't like this yellow part that's that's being colorized. It doesn't match up with the thing, and I know there's a template issue there and stuff, but. I would still not colorize that this section here to be uh, yellow. I'd probably leave that blue and just keep the collar yellow. Other than that, it's a nice jersey. Next is the uh, New York Islanders. <laughs> Stop it. S Stop it. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. The fisherman looks like he's on a surfboard and he's riding the wave. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> this is, no, guys, come on. No, this is not working for me. I, that is, <laughs> I don't, I don't like that. Uh, the numbers on the shoulders, on the blue, stroked in orange, is, is very nice. Um, yeah, I, no, <laughs> I can't do it. it. It's too, it's too silly. Okay, next. Uh, the Rangers. Oh, look at the shapes from within the Rangers logo. That little red piece, it's almost like it's opening up and opening up and then the white along the uh, inside of the middle extends into the arm and keeps that shape exploding out. But on the other side, where it splits on the, or sorry, where on the bottom left of the logo is white, it continues that line and that shape down into the red of the jersey, so it's it's mirrored, and then the blue from the top of the jersey comes down through the Rangers, through the logo, and continues on the stripe down into the arm. That is a very clever idea. I will say it looks more like a flag from the Czech Republic than it does a, a New York Rangers jersey, maybe even like a Russian jersey, or sorry, not Czech Republic, Czechia, whatever they like to be called these days. I, there's conf some, okay, there's some people from the Czech Republic or Czechia who watch my videos, and every time I say Czech Republic, they say, no, we're called Czechia now. And then and I change my, my, my tone, and then the next video, or I talk and I say, people from Czechia. And they're like, no, we still call it the Czech Republic. So I don't know what's going on over there, but y'all need to decide what you're called, and then let me know when you finally decide as a group, and then I'll continue to call you whatever you primarily want to be called. But anyways, y'all need to figure it out. But this looks, that looks like a flag. Uh, to me, more than a Rangers jersey. I think it's maybe a little bit too busy for an original six team, um, but it is a very clever design. Very, very clever design. I'd be really interested to see from, or to hear from Rangers fans down in the comments on how they feel about this one. Next is the Ottawa Senators. Okay, this is this is a great design. This is very similar to the current uh, new home jersey for the uh, Ottawa Senators, and uh, I like this a lot. This is This is fantastic. The logo feels a little bit small, other than that, this feels very realistic and very possible. Next, the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Whoa, Inter and an interesting breakage in the stripe going down. It almost feels like there should be something there, like it's breaking for a reason. There's something to fill in the gap on the arm, but there's nothing there. So it almost feels like it's slightly unfinished in a way, but it reminds me of the re reverse retro uh, a little bit. I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. I don't love it, though. Okay, next is the whoo, Pittsburgh Penguins. Wow. I love that font, the Steel City font with the rivets in there, and then the numbers as well have the rivets. 
I don't know how I feel with the gray in the background though, but what else would it be? This is a really cool concept. One that I've not, I've not seen a concept kind of like this before. So I, I definitely applaud you, Point Years, for, for kind of thinking outside the box. It reminds me slightly of, you know, when you see like a marathon race and they've got the, the, the things in the front of their jersey and it says like, the, or the, you know, it's like a sticker. They put it on the front of whatever they're running in and it's got the number and their name or whatever. Kind of get those vibes a little bit here, probably because just it's, it's a text logo versus an actual like graphic or animal or whatever. Uh, but yeah, this has, a, this has a lot of potential. I like this. Next is the Seattle Kraken. Oh, look at that gradient. That gradient is amazing. And then it even like accelerates up into the neck even more. This is great. Now that, now that we know what the Seattle Kraken jerseys look like and how big the damn logos are on there, that logo feels so small in here. With some of the other ones, I said make the logos bigger. This goes in line with that as well. I would say, you know, make the logo bigger. And I would probably change this section here again, not colorize this to be red, uh, have that be something else or just to match the rest of the jersey. And I also love how he's uh, changed the color of the laces to also replicate the gradient of the rest of the jersey. So I, I actually really like this jersey a lot. Okay, next is the San Jose Sharks. Wow, there's a lot going on. That's uh, it's a lot of orange. Hmm. I feel like maybe that teal stripe in behind is unneeded. And maybe even take the black with it. Uh, it blends a little bit, it, it, too, it blends too much in with the shark, I think. And I'd like to see that shark on the orange. I think that would look pretty good. So uh, remove that in the background. And I, I kind of like everything else. I like how the numbers are actually on a stripe in the arm. That's a really cool addition. I like how much orange is here. Um, so I think this could work. Next is the St. Louis Blues. This looks plausible. Uh, the, it feels a little, no, nah, actually, no, I take that back. I was going to say that it feels a little off balance or a little unweighted, but it doesn't because he's added a logo on the right shoulder or our left as we're looking at it. But the way that the striping is done on the bottom, it kind of goes up on the other side. So it kind of adds weight on the other side. So it balances it nicely. So I, I retract my initial first impression and, uh, I would remove the color in here again. I don't think that yellow needs to be there. I think it's distracting for no reason. But uh, not a bad jersey. Not a bad jersey at all. Next is the Tampa Bay Lightning. What is going on with the shoulder patches? They look off. I mean, even if they are... Okay, so they're not put on there correctly. But even if they were, they would still look very odd from the front because of how uh, they're, you know, they're, they're staged down. So I don't think that is the proper shoulder patch to use just based on looking at it from the front, but I kind of like what, like I like where you're going with this. A really deep dark jersey with just using that color, uh, almost like a neon teal or something, to act as a as an accent color and nothing else going on. So I kind of like the approach and how simple it is, but the shoulders are distracting for a, a wrong reason. Next, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Ooh, I love the neck. The neck is great, and the shoulder patch is great. And the logo in the middle and the striping in the behind is great. The striping along the bottom is great. Now, what's going on with the numbers? This brings me back to that other jersey we saw near the beginning. If the numbers weren't on here, if you got this blank, would those giant, would that giant maple leaf be on the arms and would it be screen printed? There's no way that that could be a patch. So it would have to be screen printed. These are the kind, I'm just trying to think about like when things are physically produced and manufactured, you have to take into, consider, in, into consideration material and uh, that would have to be screen printed. Like this, like this jersey here. There's no lo actual logo on the front of this reverse retro. It is screen printed on here. I like the jersey. Like I really actually genuinely like the jersey. I think this is definitely one of the best Maple Leafs concepts, uh, Maple Leafs jerseys concepts I've seen. This is actually, this would be a really good like winter classic. Uh, Maple Leafs fans, let me know what you think about this one. Next is the Vancouver Canucks. <sighs> wow. There's a lot going on here. Oh, so the, we've got the V striping back in here, obviously colorized differently. The shoulder patch colorized differently. I really like the way the striping is done on the arms. I think even maybe if we take away the V, if we just take the V out and have the jersey as it is with green as the primary color, keep the striping exactly as they are. Don't use white, use the gray. Uh, I think that might be good, but I think with the V in there, it is... Uh, there's too much going on in the middle. He, you lose it. You lose it. You lose the logo. So, uh, yeah, little change, and we're, we're talking. Vegas Golden Knights. Again, look at, look at the giant V. 
on the arm. There's no way that could be a patch. That, that's, it goes so far down, like that's a bend point. There's no way that could be a patch. Uh, and then that V is black, but the numbers are white. So there's a kind of a, a fight for attention there. Uh, it doesn't really match that well. So I would probably remove the V entirely. I'm not a fan of this one. Yeah, I'm, and the, the it's hard to replicate the gold fleck, right? So it just looks muddy. So difficult concept to do uh, with Vegas with the fleck. So I'm just going to pass on this one. I'm not really a big fan. Uh, Winnipeg is next. Okay, numbers unrealistic on the arms because of how they've got movement to them. Like that would be really hard to replicate, I think, as uh, something that you would stitch on. So maybe a little bit unrealistic there. But the rest of the jersey... It's almost a mix between classic or like heritage style and then current style. I think I would, I think the striping is maybe a little bit too thick. Uh, if we just like make it just a little bit thinner, it would probably look better. And that is what she said. But as it is right now, like it's not bad, but it still, it still feels a little bit too thick. And that's also what she said. Let's move on to the last one, the Washington Capitals. Whoa. That's an interesting bottom of the jersey, or bottom of the sleeve, sorry. I kind of like it, but it feels out of place for the rest of the jersey. And then the logo in the middle, it's not colorized to match the rest of the jersey. So I would, you'd have to colorize the logo in the middle to match the rest of the jersey. It just feels too out of place from a brand perspective. The bottom of the arms are so interesting. I like them, I just don't think they match the rest of the jersey. Huh, I'd, I'd really like to see a white version. Yeah, I'd be really curious to see a white version of this jersey with the logo colorization fixed. Uh, and I think that was the last one. Wow, okay, so we went through them all, and now I can pick my favorite. And I already know what it is, so I'm just gonna go right to it. As soon as I find it, it is the New Jersey Devils. I mean, that was, this This Devils concept is is great. Probably the best Devils concept maybe I've ever seen. It is definitely top three. I, I look at a lot of jerseys, so I can't say definitively that, yeah, this is the best one I've ever seen, because I don't really remember the 98 uh, other Devils concepts that I've seen in the past year and a half, but uh, like looking at it right now, that is, it, this may be the best Devils concept I've ever seen. So Devils fans, let me know what you think down below. Uh, you guys, regardless of what team you're, you cheer for, we'd love to hear your opinions down below. What jerseys did you like? Which ones didn't you? I really like seeing the comments where people list all of the teams, all of the team abbreviations, and then give like a score at a 10 or uh, rate it by like A, B, C, or D or something, you know, like they give ratings to all the jerseys. That's really easy for me to like expand and look and see how we know what people think. So if you have the time and you want to go do that, that would be really cool. I understand it does take, you know, it takes an, a little bit of an effort to do that. But uh, I, I like those comments and I'll definitely uh, hurt them as much as I can if I see them. So thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate Point Ears sending in more awesome concepts like he usually does. I always like enjoy or I always enjoy looking at his work and like what he does. So thank you very much, Point Ears. I appreciate your Point Ears. And uh, yeah. I uh, hope you guys are having a good start to your weekend. The goat is in town. If you've made it this far in the video, the goat got in town yeah, last night. We've got a bunch of uh, packages to open over here from mail time. They're all stacked over there. I don't think you can see them on camera. No, but there's a bunch over there. Uh, we're going to do some videos together as well. We're going to film a podcast, I think, this weekend with Jason with the goat. So there's going to be lots of goat action. And if you're new and you have no idea who the goat is and you hear me, hear me saying goat action, that's likely an awkward term for you to hear. But uh, there's going to be a goat of some proportions in a lot of the upcoming videos over the next couple of weeks. So I uh, hope you guys are looking forward to that. It's always nice to see him. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Adios.